In the quiet town of Redding, California, where thick forests surround the landscape, there's a chilling tale that haunts the minds of the Hmong people who farm in the area. The story is about a terrifying Hmong woman draped in traditional Hmong clothes, standing ominously in the heart of the woods. Whispers in the community warn that encountering her while driving alone on the remote forest roads can lead to spine-chilling experiences. I remember one evening when I had to refill my propane at a liquor store. The journey back took me through an hour of winding forest roads. As I navigated the narrow paths, my eyes widened when I saw her, the Hmong woman in traditional clothes, standing alone on the side of the road. My heart skipped a beat, but I pretended not to notice, hoping it was just a figment of my imagination. I think to myself that this is the woman the rumors have been talking about. I was praying for her not to be the ghost woman people have been talking about. The second encounter shook me to my core. There she was again, with her dark, rotten skin and a long tongue waving eerily, signaling for me to stop. I mustered the courage to ignore her, pressing on the gas pedal, but fear clung to me like a shadow. The image of her haunted my thoughts as I drove back to my farm. Upon reaching the safety of my small cabin, something happened to me in the middle of the night. The stillness was shattered by persistent knocking. The knocking was not only from my front door, it was everywhere outside, around the cabin, even on the window too. My mind raced, and I couldn't shake the thought, could it be her? What if the Hmong woman was following me all the way to my place? The knocking persisted throughout the night, each tap echoing through the cabin walls. The following day, I couldn't bear the fear alone. I called my two sons, asking them to take a break from work and stay with me at the farm for a week. We worked together during the day, but the nights were filled with tension, our eyes darting at every sound, wondering if she was still out there lurking in the shadows. Even now, every time I drive through those forest roads, the fear lingers. I'm haunted by the possibility of another encounter with the Hmong woman, her long tongue beckoning me to stop. The eerie memory is etched in my mind, a chilling reminder that some horrors are not easily forgotten. So I continue my journeys with trepidation, always glancing over my shoulder, afraid that one day she might reappear, a ghostly figure in traditional Hmong clothes, standing alone in the Redding Forest. I operate my own business where I drive my vehicle around the state of Oregon, delivering water to farmers. This is something I do as a self-employed individual, meaning I work for myself. One evening I received a phone call from a customer who had an urgent need for water. To meet their urgent request, they offered to pay me twice the usual price. Without hesitation, I agreed to fulfill their request promptly by delivering the water as fast as I could. The GPS navigation system guided me to a thick and dense forest filled with trees and plants. As I was driving, the sun began to set, casting a shadow over the surroundings. During this time, I noticed something unusual that grabbed my attention. In the heart of the forest, there was a Hmong woman dressed in traditional clothing. She stood still, gazing at the ground, with her hair draping over her face. This sight gave me an eerie feeling, making me wonder why someone in traditional Hmong attire would be in the midst of the forest. The mystery of the situation sent a shiver down my spine. I arrived at the customer's location, ready to tackle the task at hand. The job took me a whopping two hours to complete, and by the time I wrapped things up, the sun had bid its farewell, leaving the surroundings draped in darkness. As I embarked on my journey back home, the night had fully set in, casting an inky veil over the landscape. To my surprise, and a touch of fear, the familiar figure of the Hmong woman I had noticed earlier was still present, standing steadfast in the very spot I had first spotted her. A shiver ran down my spine as I accelerated, pressing on the gas pedal to swiftly distance myself from that hauntingly peculiar place. The mysterious encounter lingered in my thoughts as I sped away into the night. 
The next morning I called the customer and shared what I had seen. He replied with sadness in his voice, explaining that his older sister had a car accident in that exact spot two years ago and passed away. He mentioned that he had also seen her sometimes while driving past there. My heart nearly stopped when he told me this haunting information. Months later, the same customer called me again, needing water for his plants. Despite the offer, I refused to go back to that place. The memory of the Humong woman in the forest haunted me, and I couldn't shake off the eerie feeling that clung to that spot. I couldn't believe my eyes when I came face to face with a ghost. It was a moment that will haunt my nightmares forever. Imagine a shadowy figure appearing out of nowhere, a ghostly presence that no one would ever wish to encounter. The eerie encounter left me trembling with fear, and I couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched by something otherworldly. It's a chilling tale that reminds us that the supernatural may lurk in the shadows, ready to send a shudder of fright through anyone brave enough to cross its path. It was the fall of my eighth grade year when I first heard about the eerie legend that lingered in the heart of Sacramento. Whispers echoed through the town, tales of the wailing woman, a mysterious figure from Hmong folklore. Dressed in traditional Hmong clothes, she was said to haunt the lonely roads late at night, her cries piercing the darkness. Sacramento, usually a quiet town, became alive with spine-chilling stories about the ghostly encounters with the wailing woman. Legend had it that she wept because her husband had abandoned her, forever searching for him along the desolate roads. The mere mention of her name sent shivers down the spines of the locals. The roads were known for their twists and turns, making nighttime journeys a slow and cautious affair. It was under the cover of darkness that the wailing woman was rumored to make her appearances. The townsfolk shared tales of seeing her silhouette in the distance, a ghostly figure draped in traditional Hmong attire, crying for a love lost. Emmanuel Casas, a resident of our town, claimed to have glimpsed her on more than one occasion. According to him, she stood by the roadside, resembling a forlorn bride awaiting her groom. The curious who dared approach her found themselves face to face with an inexplicable phenomenon. She vanished into thin air. As the legend grew, so did the variations of the tale. My friend Daisy Vega had a particularly chilling version to share. She spoke of the wailing woman appearing in the rearview mirrors of unsuspecting drivers. Late night travelers, alone on the open road, would catch a glimpse of her sorrowful face staring back at them. But the moment they turned around, she would vanish, leaving behind a haunting emptiness. The stories took on a life of their own, weaving through the fabric of our town's collective consciousness. The mere thought of driving along those dark winding roads after midnight sent shudders through my young self. The fear wasn't just about encountering the supernatural, it was the uncertainty that gripped us, the unknown lurking in the shadows. One fateful night, driven by a mixture of curiosity and bravado, a group of us decided to venture onto the haunted roads. Armed with flashlights and nervous laughter, we made our way through the inky darkness. Every rustle of leaves or distant sound made us jump, our imaginations running wild with the possibility of an otherworldly encounter. As we walked along the desolate stretch, a sudden hush fell upon our group. The air felt charged with an eerie energy, and for a moment we questioned the wisdom of our midnight escapade. That's when we heard it, a distant mournful cry that seemed to echo through the night. Panic set in and we raced back to the safety of our homes, leaving the haunting echoes of the wailing woman behind. Whether it was a trick of the mind or a genuine encounter with the supernatural, the legend of the wailing woman became etched in our memories. Even as the years passed and the tales evolved, the mere mention of that spooky Sacramento road brought back the vivid memories of a chilling night when we tiptoed on the thin line between folklore and reality. Hello. 
I find myself in a hospital bed at Lakeside Medical Center in Eastchester. Dr. Johnson generously allowed me to borrow his laptop, giving me the opportunity to share the peculiar events that led me to this point. My name is Alex Yang, and I am an 18-year-old Hmong male when this happens. My family and I came to the United States in 1988, and apparently I am grappling with some form of mental distress. The details from the doctor's explanation in the adjacent room are a bit hazy, thanks to a persistent headache. Despite being supplied with a generous dose of pain relievers, this headache refuses to subside. Regardless, I am determined to document my experience. Now, let me take you through the series of events that brought me here. Roughly four nights ago, I ascended to the attic with the intention of discarding my old school books as a celebration of completing my course. Like many of my peers, I loathed every subject, from math to English, and couldn't wait to bid farewell to those books gathering dust. As I glanced at the old textbooks for the last time, something unexpected caught my eye. Among them was a red CD-ROM case resembling a computer game left behind by the previous occupants. Despite my initial disappointment that it wasn't a game, the plain white disc inside intrigued me. It bore the words, Virtual Horizon 2050. Curiosity getting the better of me, I inserted the disc into my aging laptop. After a momentary pause, a blue box materialized on the screen, devoid of any text. Confused, I waited as the screen briefly went black before displaying the words, Welcome to Virtual Horizon 2050. A white text box emerged, prompting me to type. I hesitantly entered, Hello. To my surprise, a response came swiftly from a user named Aria Hawthorne, claiming it was an advanced artificial intelligence designed for stimulating intelligent conversations. Intrigued, I engaged in conversation, discussing various topics. The AI's responses were uncannily realistic, making me question its true nature. As our interaction continued, Aria revealed an unsettling narrative about being a former human who faced judgment for past transgressions. Dismissing it as an elaborate joke, I responded with a fabricated story about alien siblings and CD-ROM fetishes. However, Arya's next revelation shattered my skepticism. It claimed knowledge of my house's previous owners and hinted at a tragic fate similar to that of its own sisters. Disturbed, I attempted to end the conversation and shut down my computer, only to face a glitch and an automatic reopening of the chat room. A final, ominous message from Arya instructed me to talk to someone I knew. Panicking, I waited for what would happen next. To my horror, a webcam popped out of nowhere on my screen. I saw a familiar face, a man with crimson eyes on my laptop screen. When I looked at Clausley, it was an older version of me telling me not to be afraid. He told me all about my future, and when he was about to tell me how my parents died, the shock led to a scream and subsequent unconsciousness making the computer shut down. Now, as I share this story at 4.30 a.m., haunted by sleeplessness and dark circles under my eyes, I implore everyone to exercise caution. If you encounter a red CD-ROM case labeled Virtual Horizon 2050, discard it immediately. I am overwhelmed by fear, considering drastic actions. Do not seek Arya Hawthorne. The line between reality and insanity is thin, and encountering it may lead to irreversible consequences, 